think it was the end of last week. Yes, it was. Saturday morning. I read you a story that was faxed to me by somebody in Columbia, Missouri. And I thought it incredible. The uh, story is uh, entitled, Kansas City Man Tries to Build Time Machine on Porch. Now, in case you don't remember the, uh, the, the general tenure of the article, I'm going to remind you now. Kansas City Associated Press. When a Missouri factory worker set out to make a time machine on his back porch, the contraption he came up with was not completely off the mark, theoretically, according to scientists. With a high-voltage electrical transformer that Michael Markham had hooked up to two vertical metal rods would more likely have killed him or blown up his house than carried him into the past or future. Time travel, though enticingly possible in the mathematics of Einstein's theory of relativity, is not likely in the physical universe, they say. Uh, they go on, quote, it is a very interesting area, though. There are theoretical physicists working on those areas, and I will not say that it's total nonsense. This was according to um, the uh, chairman at the physics department at the University of Missouri at Kansas City. But he went on, it's not something that you can demonstrate with batteries. And I guess that was Michael's problem. So are the Stanbury police who say the voltage that Markham had diverted into the contraption caused power interruptions in and around the northwest Missouri town of about 1300. Markham had connected the metal rods to the terminals of a transformer, one of six stolen from a utility company, in hopes of creating a large spark gap with ascending electrical arcs. Markham was arrested January 29th on a felony charge of stealing the transformers from a St. Joseph light and power generating station in King City. He pleaded guilty last month, was placed on five years probation. Police said the transformers had a capacity of 12 to 76,000 volts each, enough to easily cause electrocution or an explosion. Markham, who told police that he has two years of college-level electrical engineering, said he was building a time machine, but didn't have enough power for it. Uh, that's according to the Stanbury police chief, Tom Hampton. Hampton said, quote, he's not nuts. He appears to be an intelligent person with a lack of common sense. Maybe. Hampton said Markham told officers he had not tried to enter the uh, spark gap, and neither had anyone else. If anyone had, they probably would, would have been electrocuted, not transported in time. Presumably, he decided that if he got enough electricity together, he could build a time machine, because there is the concept that if you're going to do it, it's going to require an enormous amount of energy. So there it was, and um, you know me and these kinds of stories and how I'm fascinated by time. So I set out to find young Mr. Markham, and I found him. I found him. It wasn't easy. I went through a couple of uh, our affiliates, and then I just uh, started going to uh, phone directories and uh, rooting about, and uh, lo and behold, there was a new number, and it was, um, it was Michael's, and I've got Michael here. And so I thought I would ask him, and I did a little earlier today, and we're going to go through it right now and find out exactly what it is Michael was trying to do. We'll get back to him in just a moment. Um, Michael, are you there? Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, first of all, had you heard that story before? Oh, the, about, uh, yeah, the one I just read? Oh, uh, yeah. You've heard that, huh? Yeah. It's like I'm like collecting clippings on it now. Oh, you are? Yeah. How old are you, Michael? Uh, 21. 21. Pretty young. Yeah, very. Um, now, let's go kind of back through the story like you and I did uh, earlier today. Uh, this all began... Well, why did it... Well, that's a good question. I didn't even ask that. Why did this begin in the first place? What were you trying to do in the first place? Uh, originally, I just set out to make a fancy Jacob's Ladder, and this was like what, I got, what, it, turned, what it turned out to be. Uh... Uh, I didn't Sorry, like... a lot of people don't know what a Jacob's ladder is. Tell them what it is. Uh, simply, in a nutshell, it's a, a like two metal rods with a spark going up in between it. And once it reaches the top, it starts back to the bottom again. So, 
That kind yeah. of deal, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, like from a Frankenstein movie. Yeah, that's uh, like that's where they got started at. Okay. Well, there are ways to do that. The Van de Graaff generator, for example. You familiar with that? Uh, yeah. Uh, but you were going to do it with. Uh, well, ac actually, how were you going to do it? So, you, you told me something about winding your own transformer. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's what I originally did, uh, and it's like the it's uh, I like used a uh, it's, it was like real touchy, and what I did was I used a la uh, used a laser, a modified CD laser for it. Well, so, let's stay with the transformer for a moment. Yeah. How did you wind this transformer? How did you do that? Oh well, it's pretty simple, really. But uh, uh, I just take uh, these metal uh, took these metal plates and glued them together. Glued them together, yeah. Yeah, and there's and most trans in the simplest transformers, just that there's uh, two coils, your primary and your secondary. Right. And uh, uh and it's uh. Is it like, like is it like making a giant? Ball of string or something. In other words, you just keep winding and winding and winding it around. Uh, yeah. It, well, it's there's like technical things, uh, but uh, simply, yeah, simply put, it's like yes, like uh, your primary coil will have like maybe 400 turns, or it depends on how many watts you want to make it to. Right. But let's say it's four. Uh, let's say it's 400 turns in your primary, and there's say there's 4,000 turns in your secondary. Mm-hmm. Well, 10 times the turns, and then you'll get 10 times the voltage. Right. Yeah. Right, okay. So you, you is that about what you did, uh, 400 and 4,000? Well, the, the the small transformer had to change the 100, I don't know how many turns. I lost count. I never bothered to count the second. I uh, put about 450 turns in the primary. So you just kept winding. <laughs> yeah, until it got roughly 20,000 volts. 20,000 volts? Yeah. So you went from 110 to 20,000? Yeah, roughly. Roughly. Um, all right. Um, with uh, Without, I take it, very much current. Well, uh Actually, quite a bit. About roughly, it was about three. It was drawing about three thousand watts. So, oh, yeah. So I was. I was. I was let's see. Uh, it was probably about uh, about tenth of an amp. Tenth of an amp. All yeah. right. Well, that's uh, considered a mount when it's yeah. twenty thousand volts behind it. Oh yeah, that would knock you right on your butt. Oh yeah. Um, so so then you did this, you built this thing, and you had the arc, and you, you were able to achieve the arc, is that correct? Yeah. All right, so here you have this beautiful arc going, and, or, or, or was it not quite going the way you wanted it to? Uh, well, it was like a little bit touch, it was like kind of touchy, because it's like a, like the bar at the bottom of the metal rods. Right. And where the spark starts, if they're too close together, the spark will stick. But if they're too far apart, it it won't work at all. So it's uh, and it's like I was like it was like real touchy. If I moved a fraction of a millimeter, the thing stuck. And if I moved it too far apart, it didn't do anything. So what I did with what I set out to do is like uh, use a laser, like use the heat from a laser to to like, get it started or yeah, something? like get it going by itself. I see. The heat from a laser. That's interesting. So it would uh, the heat from a laser would attract. The spark, sort of. Well, yeah, in a way, the see the the, the heat from the laser lowers the resistance of the air. Is what it does. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, you 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 got this laser by how'd you get the laser? Uh, oh, well, I practically made it from scratch. I took a CD laser and redid all the electronics in it, like the like kind of like reinforcing it, you'd say. Uh, a CD laser. So you tore apart a CD player. Yeah. <laughs> and and so then you got you got the laser. Did it do what you wanted it to to do? You know, start the spark? Uh yeah. It's it's like had some other effects I didn't expect. <laughs> well, and therein lies the story. Other effects you didn't expect, like what? Well, it's like a uh there's like that spark's pretty hot, so you're gonna have like a heat signature like right above it. But, uh, you mean kind of like a haze, a hazy uh, glow or something? Well, kind of like like wavy. If you ever like, if you like, take a, a lighter and like look right above it, you'll see like you'll like see like the heat from it. That's right. Yeah, you know, it's like real faint. But uh, now I was expecting 
uh, I know that it's going to be like uh, probably an extra, like like a bigger heat signature from the laser. But uh, uh, this one was like strange, like uh, almost circ- the, right above it. It was like the regular uh, heat signature, but it was like a uh, kind of like it was like almost kind of like the uh, circular shaped in the center. Sort of like a um, a glow. Uh, not really a glow. It's like if if you don't really look at it, you can't see it. Uh, it's like an and it's like normal. Not, nor, no. Is it like um? Well, you know when you're out in the desert in the middle of summer and you see the shimmering coming off a road. Uh yeah. Is it like that? Yeah, but yeah, but it's it's like and normally those are just wavy lines straight up and down, kind of. Right. But uh, this one had the straight up and down ones. That they were like kind of like uh. uh it's like kind of like circular shaped in the center. Huh. And that was like I was. It's like I didn't know what the at first I didn't know what it was. I'm not 100 percent certain now. It's why I'm, it's like that's what I'm working on now, trying to. Like, oh, you, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. You're back at this again. Huh? You're back at this again, are you? Uh, yeah. I'm just like picking up where I left off, but this time I'm like. Not doing anything illegal. No, when when I <laughs> we'll get to that. When I called you earlier today, you said, um, uh, "Gee, it's well you caught me or something." I I just got out of jail. You uh, just you got, well, I got out of jail like uh, I got out of jail March thirtieth. So. March oh March thirtieth. Well, that's pretty much just out of jail. Yeah. And uh, you're able to do this program tonight because you are more or less not not employed. Uh, yeah, I got all kinds of free time right now. <laughs> were, were you employed, uh, Michael, um, at, at, at back when you got in trouble? Uh, when I was arrested, uh, yeah, I was. So did this... In fact, this... I was like supposed to go to work the next day. So in other I words, got arrested. So in other words, this cost you your job. Uh, in a way, because there's like other things branching off this, but my boss thought it contaminated his plant with PCBs. But that's another story. <laughs> I guess from the Transformers, huh? Yeah, because uh, one of the Transformers that... Well, wait a minute. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. Yeah. All right, let's, let's go back. We're, we're, see, we're with you, your first small contraption. That's all I can think of to call it. And um, you told me something about throwing a, a bolt or a screw or something. Uh, yeah, a sheet metal screw. Uh, see, I didn't know what this thing was, and it was like, I don't know. I just got the notion to throw a screw in it to see like what it did. Uh, I never saw anything like that before. So, like, so, kind of like testing it. Wh- wh- yeah, a screw, I guess, would be as good as anything else. Yeah. Mine might do that, too. All right, so you threw a screw into the... Circular thing. Yeah. Circular or, area. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, a couple of... I've talked to a couple of physicists. They, uh, they call it a vortex, but... Uh, All right, you threw it into what we'll call the vortex. Yeah. All right, what happened to the screw? Uh... Well, I had this thing sitting on sitting on a table, right? Yeah. And uh, I threw it in there, and uh, it like I didn't see it after that. It and, disappeared. Yeah, for roughly, I like did it three times. I, I could, uh, it's like uh, my laser burn up, so I knew it'd do that. I just didn't think it'd do it so quick. But uh, uh, so it probably provided uh, such a high SWR, it's called standing wave ratio, to the laser that it burned it up. Uh. Yeah, because uh, I like kind of like over. Uh, I knew it. It's like uh, it's like pushing that farther than it was designed for is what it was. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me this thing disappeared. Uh, yeah. It either, it either it's and that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. It did it did, did one or two things. It went half a second into the future and then I caught up with it, or it, uh, I made I made like a real intense magnetic field. And that's what I'm like. That's what I'm trying to figure out right now. All right, this is fascinating, uh, Michael. It really is because uh, there are aspects of what you have done that are very much like I've interviewed the people who did the Philadelphia experiment, Michael. Yeah, that's what the Montauk project is. Like, yeah, and you're that. and you're you're messing with the same sort of stuff. You're messing with the same sort of stuff. Oh well, anyway, all right. So continue with the story. We you you, you got this. It disappeared. You blew up your laser. And then you sat there thinking, wow, I did something different here. Yeah, it's like it freaked me out. It's like a, at, at first I thought I was seeing things. but uh, So what did you do, go away and think about it for a day or two or a week? Or when did you finally get this 
brilliant light bulb of an idea to build a larger unit. Well, it's like a, a half. It's like a, a half a second. It's not not very much. But uh, I figure if I make a, a bigger one, it'd send it farther. That way, I could really like tell if it's like really like uh, if I was like sending it through time or if I was just sending it through an intense magnetic field. Well, um, right. Oh, so, but what I mean is, how long did you think about whether you wanted to build a? Did it occur to you right away when you blew up your little one? I'm going to build a bigger one. Uh, well, first, I, first I was like after that after that thing burn out uh, after all. The, after, literally, after all the smoke cleared. Uh, smoke? Yeah. In other words, there was sort of a reaction to the screw. Well, no, the, where the laser, the, when, I, when I say the laser burn up, it literally caught fire, the electronics. Caught fire? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Well, yeah. all right, so so your equipment was smoldering. Yeah. Uh, and it's like I was, I was, either, I was thinking, about, uh, thinking about just like rebuilding the laser. Because the basic part of the laser is fine, but the part of the electronics, like, they were, like, totally ruined. Uh, and I was thinking... Uh, Just rebuild the electronics and try it again. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about doing, but I figured uh, if I'm going to... Because uh, basically I almost have to start from scratch except building the transformer. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I figured I'd make it just a bigger version of what I did. So wanting a big transformer... Uh, you needed a lot of voltage to do this, right? Uh, yeah, two thousand volts of arc, but uh, uh, it's like uh, two thousand volts. That's like very touchy. And uh, ten thousand or twenty thousand volts uh, really arcs. Uh, yeah. Well, it's the uh, wattage to make it make it arc. A welder will arc, and it's only it's only like ten volts because there's so much amperage behind it. But uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, it, but you have to like get it real close. It's like uh, and it's at 2,000 volts. You, it, it has to be within like half the bottom, the space between uh, the space between the rods at the bottom has to be like half a millimeter apart for an arc. How uh, far apart were your two rods on the first small machine you built? Uh, about two inches. Two inches. Oh, that's pretty good space. Yeah. Um. So then, um, it dawns on you. Let's build a big one. Yeah. So now I didn't ask you about this earlier, but in order to get enough uh, voltage and current, you needed a big transformer. Now yeah. it's true the power company has big transformers. Yeah. Really nice ones. Yeah. And um, how did it dawn on you to? What's the word we should use? Borrow one of the or several of the power company's transformers. Uh, how do I get the idea for it? Yeah, I mean, you know, you knew you knew you needed a transformer. How did it occur to you? Well, to... Uh, originally, what I was going to do, I was, I was like, uh, I was like originally going to like buy them. Like, there's like a, a transformer company in Kansas City that makes them for the power company, and uh, well, there was an idea. Yeah, but uh, it's like uh, I could have like saved my money and bought and bought those, but those are expensive. How much is a transformer? Just out of curiosity. Uh, know? well, I'll give you an idea. When I, buy, when I buy them from the factory, I buy them at wholesale. But the the St. Joseph Light and Power, the power company I stole them from, uh, they're about, they value the six transformers I took. They value them at thirteen thousand six hundred some dollars. Oh my! Uh, so that's not shoplifting. All right, Michael, hold on a moment. We've got a little business to do here, and we'll get right back to you. Um, back now to Michael. Michael, are you there? Uh, yeah. They don't call you Madman Markham, do they? Uh, I haven't been called that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just made that up, Michael. Don't let it bother you. Nah. All right, so uh, here we are, wanting now to build our big... At this point, what were you calling it, by the way? Obviously, it was no little entertainment thing anymore. Uh, well, it's, like I said, I, I'm not sure what this thing was. It was either a tenth magnetic field or, or some sort of time machine. Well, actually, it would have been a combination of electrical and... Uh, a magnetic field, I guess. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you, you, plans got big. You decided you wanted to build a great big one. So according to the story, you had two big poles on your porch. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, three inch, three eighths inch metal rods. Really? How yeah. big? You mean how long? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, roughly four feet. Oh, that would have made a big spark. Yeah. Big spark. And uh, so you had the, the rods, and you needed the transformers desperately. 
Yeah. You probably could have saved up for it, but you didn't. You made a mistake. Yeah. And you. In a hurry. So what did you do? Did you sneak into their yard? Oh, you mean the the. In other words, how'd you get the transformers? And you didn't heist them off a pole, of course. Oh heck no. Uh huh. So. They were noticed immediately. They were gone then. But uh, these these were just uh, sitting by a, a substation in King City. Just sitting there. They were just sitting. Yeah, just sitting. They've been uh, they've been sitting there for ever since I moved to Missouri. So. You hated to see them uh, languishing without use. Yeah, well, they were just sitting there rusting. And, uh -huh. and heck, they don't, they don't even use them. Heck, in fact, right now, they just got them put away for safekeeping, they say. so. Probably historical record. Yeah, yeah now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, what did you do, take a pickup truck? Uh, those things are heavy, aren't they? Uh, yeah, uh, the biggest one I had, the biggest one I had weighed 350 pounds. Ooh, well then, you must have had... An accomplice. Yeah, a couple of them. A couple of them? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't talked to them. Uh, one of the, uh, their court date was the same as mine, and they, looked, they didn't look too happy with me. So. <laughs> I'm sure they weren't. No. So anyway, somehow uh, you talked them into helping you out in this venture, Yeah. and you snuck down there, no doubt, late at night. Well, it was right in, it was right in broad daylight. Broad daylight? Yeah, roughly 11 o'clock in the morning. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so in broad daylight, you took the Transformers, loaded them up in a pickup truck, I guess? Yeah. And hauled them to your house? Yep. I see. And you had how many of them? Six. Why six, Michael? Well, uh, I, mean, I mean, why did you feel you needed six? Well, origi originally, I was just going to take a couple of them, but it's like a... You got carried away. Yeah, pretty much. I see. All right, uh, so you got the Transformers to your house, and um, then you, um, I guess, hooked up the secondary. Uh, no, it would have been the primary of the Transformer to the poles, correct? Uh, yeah, basically, I just hooked it backwards. Yeah, that's right, backwards. So the yeah. primary was hooked to the poles, the secondary. You hooked up to the power coming into your home? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... What happened when you did that, by the way? Uh, well, it's, I didn't get to the the big version of it. I didn't get the laser part yet. I was going to order that from uh, New Jersey. Had you uh, you see, had you uh, had you produced a large spark with it? Uh, yeah. Uh, the see, I, that's another thing too. Before I, I was like arrested on the thirtieth and. Uh, on um, February 3rd, I was going to order, I was going to get, pick up like a 60 feet worth of cable so I can reinforce the cable to my house. So. You mean, was, you mean actually coming in from the pole? Uh, yeah. Uh, what were you going to do? Climb the pole? Uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael. Because I uh, figured if I called the power company and had them reinforce the cable to my house, I'd like draw suspicion, so. Uh huh. Um, so, so well, I'm sure it would. Uh, yes, it would. <laughs> it would want to know why. Yeah, why, why I'd need a cable that carries 2,000 amps instead of the re usual 200. <laughs> now, so you, you did, though. You nevertheless uh, hooked it up and you, you turned it on, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I hooked up the smallest one that I could hook up without, like, overloading the cable and causing a fire. Yeah. What happened? Uh, well, it's pretty, just that in itself is just like a... Uh, a giant Jacob's ladder, like a. How 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 um, how far apart were you able to get these poles and still produce the spark? Uh, about eighteen inches. Eighteen inches. Yeah, it was, it was a uh, the trend, it was the smallest one I uh, had. It was uh, changed to uh, uh, changed two forty to twelve thousand four hundred seventy. Twelve thousand four hundred seventy. Um, so. When you did this, according to the newspaper, you bl blacked out or browned out portions of your whole town. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I was like overloading the power grid because uh, I was drawing more power than I thought it was. Well, what got you caught? Was that what got you caught? Uh, no. Uh, 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 in a in a nutshell, uh, a friend uh, a friend of mine was uh, at my house. Well. Uh, uh, Somebody squealed on you. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know what happened, but uh, exactly, and I'll probably never know. That's in the past. I ain't really worried about that now. But uh, what happened was a friend of mine, like, from my house, uh, uh, shot a BB gun, like, shot up my next-door neighbor's flying glass door window. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, and I got the cops snooping around, so. And they just happened to see this incredible rig on your porch? Uh, No, they came. uh, That happened at roughly, uh, I can't remember. This was, this was. I guess it was back in the end of January. That happened around uh, noon, or noon or one o'clock, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, they came by. They came by with a search warrant at eleven o'clock at night. So, so obviously they had seen it then, and they decided. We well, better... they never been in the house. Right, but they didn't have to be to see the porch, did they? Well, it was like the porch was closed in. And oh, all, all the windows were boarded up. Oh, I see. Yeah, like. Stuff, stuff like that, like try could, to keep out of sight. Could it? Could it be? I guess, uh, Michael, when you started a big gap, an 18-inch gap like that, it would have created an intense white light. Uh, well, it was, let's see, it was, it was a 5,000 watt spark, so it was. But it would have been very intense, and uh, from, yeah, it's like you, maybe from your neighbor's perspective, Michael, they would hear this. <laughs> And their yeah, lights would dim, and, and, and they'd look that, over at yeah, you know, they'd look over at your porch, and they'd see this white light streaming out from the, all the little cracks and places, and they'd get worried. Could that be? Uh, that's a possibility. Hmm. But, uh, all right, all right. Uh, so no, the main thing they were like, see, it's like a they were like a that's the reason. Kind of one, that's one of the reasons I moved from Stanbury because uh, half that town wants my head on a pole. I have the feeling. You mean they don't like you now? Uh, well, it's like a. I don't know if this is like I don't know if this is just another unfounded rumor or not, but like uh, a lot of those people's television sets are ruined and stuff like that because uh, I was like drawing so much power and it's like uh, like normally it's a 120 120 volt outlet and well it's like uh, they were estimating this is this what I've heard I don't know if it's a fact or not but they were estimating I was like bringing it down to like 80 volts 80 and 90 volts that is damaging to electronic gear yeah mm-hmm. so. A lot of people in town with appliances that now are door stops are probably not happy with you. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Most of most of them, uh, most of it is just uh, like uh, lights would flicker, and, like dim real bad and stuff like that. But uh, evidently, it's people that were just having to be watching TV when I operated it. They operated that thing at night too. So <laughs> yes, uh, that way, not, not a lot, of, whole, a whole lot of people are like. I had see at first when I hooked this thing up, I thought it, it was it's a it was a five thousand watt spark. I figured it'd be well. That's, that's, see these transformers ain't as efficient as I first thought they would be. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, it, was, it was like drawing a heck of a lot more than I thought. A lot more current. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you weren't going to walk into the middle of that spark gap, were you? Uh, no. Uh, I was like, if, well, I like made the big version. If it did the same thing. I was like going to like do like throw something else for it, like uh, not uh, something that's like uh, uh, something a little bigger than a screw to disappear, maybe. Yeah, like maybe an orange or something like that. And if it came out like in one piece without getting fried to crisp, then then you would have walked in. Well, there's other things too. It's like the Philadelphia experiment. Uh, people were like, uh, from what I've heard, people were buried in the deck. Yeah, embedded in walls and stuff like that. Yeah, because you can't tell where you're coming back out. Yeah, because you you lose uh, you lose your time lock. But uh, would you have eventually done it if the orange came out okay, and then maybe you tossed a cat in or something? Uh, <laughs> a cat came I out. I don't want to say that, but I figured. Well, oh, I guess you you were going to toss it. You were going to toss a cat in. Uh. Well, if everything else came out all right, like totally unscathed, then then the cat would have gone like, in. Like, I, well, I'd probably try something that was alive and small, like a grasshopper or something like that. That would be good. Yeah. Before the cat. Yeah. All right, Michael, hold on. We'll be right back to you. <laughs> we uh, we're going to find out what he's experimenting with right now, and I may take a couple calls here. All right, Michael, are you there? Yes. Good, Michael. Um, now you're a free man again. Out of out of the pokey, and ready to begin experiments. I've just learned all over again. You're going to do this again, huh? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Well, you don't give up easily. I'll say that for you. Uh, nope. By the way, what did everybody think of you when you were in jail? I assume you told them this story. 
Well, you... until the media started taking it seriously, everybody thought I was a nutcase. Mm-hmm. Um, you sound sane to me. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, a little on the wild side, but sane. Anyway, so what are you going to do now? Uh, You're gonna re how are you going to rebuild it, in other words? Uh, right now, well, right now I'm just uh, basically saving my money and I'm going to uh, do what I originally set out to do, buy them. You're going to buy the Transformers? Uh, yep. What would be the legality of your using them if you bought them? Uh, would that be, be perfectly legal? Should be. I mean, as long as I don't, like, no, I like, might get into EPA violations if I, like, take them apart and, like, get oil all over the place and stuff like that, but as long as I don't do anything like that. You mentioned you lost your job. How did your employer think you polluted his workplace with PCPs? I mean... You you had not taken these apart, right? Well, one of them I couldn't use, and uh, I didn't really want to like take it back there and like get caught taking it back. So uh, I figured I might as well strip the copper out of it and sell the copper. So you took it apart? Uh, yeah. And while I was originally, I didn't really just dump it on the porch. That was that was kind of like an accident. But uh, I was like taking the oil and uh, putting it in a plastic waste basket. Well, it's like a, this was like a, a three thousand only a three thousand watt transformer. That's pretty small for a pole, like uh, yeah. utility pole. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it weighs like one hundred and fifty pounds, and uh, I was like the only one doing it. And my finger slipped, and I ended up dropping it, and dumping like ten gallons of oil all over the back porch. Oops. Yeah, and any anyway. Uh, uh, ended up getting it all over me too because it splattered. And uh, evidently, the, the uh, anyhow, it's like I uh, got all the back porch. Well, anyhow, the shoes that, uh, that I was wearing at the time also were the shoes that I wear to work. Work, and he thought I tracked PCBs into it, and where where he used to work, he thought I tracked them into his plant, tracked PCBs in his plant. I see. And so that was the end of your job. Uh, well, I, he didn't really say that, but uh, I have that feeling. Because uh, he, like, asked me uh, who and all was in my house, who and all was, was around those Transformers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Has the EPA knocked on your door yet, Michael? Uh, no. It, it, turns, it turns out uh, that was just, it turns out the Transformer I took apart, uh, I tried telling them that. They wouldn't take my word for it. The Transformer I uh, took apart is, like, too old. It was, even, it was darn old. It was, like, too old. For, it was, like, four PCPs were around. It turned out just to be plain old crude oil. Oh, I'm sure you were personally relieved a little about that. Well, it's like I almost—I was almost certain that that was all it was because uh, the. Tra uh, well, I'll put it this way: the last time that the transformer was even checked was in 1924. So. Well, I see. Well, um, so you're going to try this again. You're going to save up money, buy the stuff, and try it again. Are you going to do it on the big scale the way you did last time? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It'll just. Uh, right now, I mean, uh, going to be on your back porch. Uh, well, uh, I'm living in an apartment right now, and then, oh. uh, yeah, I'm on the third floor too. So I'll probably move before I do that. Like that—that that might be good. Yeah, that might be good. That might not go well in an apartment. Yeah, plus the power that's going that's uh, going to my apartment is, is only ten thousand watts. So if I draw more than that, I'll overload the transformer and blow it. Just a theoretical question for you. Um, let's say that you produced a time machine, Michael, and you actually managed to go either forward or reverse in time. Um, what would you use it for? Uh, the time machine? Uh-huh. Uh, heck, there's possibilities. They're endless. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I guess they are. Um, I, I guess I'm asking, Michael, would you use it to make money? Uh... That'd be one of the things I'd do. It wouldn't be the only thing I'd do. I mean, give you like give you an example. Uh, uh, like uh, right now, there's like an AIDS plague, kind of like a 20th century Black Death. But that's right. Yeah. You know, so I, uh, I don't know exactly when they're going to have like a vaccine for AIDS or anything like that. But but you might try to bring one back. Uh, yeah. That's that's a good answer. Yeah. Um, Michael, um, let Same me... Same thing with cancer and stuff like that. Well, it's true. It is true. Um, let me bring a caller on and see... W and every line is lit up here, and I'm curious what the audience has to say about this. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. 
Yes, hi, this is Maureen from Redding, California. Yes. Hi. Um, unless I'm misunderstanding uh, your guest there and yourself, um, I am just really blown away by exactly what you have been talking about because I've always been real impressed with you, Art, as far as um, I, I've always thought you as to be a person of high intelligence, what have you, um, your guest you've had on your show in the past. I've always been impressed with that. But this has got to be the lamest thing I've ever heard in my life. You don't believe it? Well, it's basically, um, let's let's teach somebody how to make an atomic bomb, what have you. Uh, what do you I think mean, about that, Michael? How do you feel about that? Would you build an atomic bomb if you could? Uh, build an atomic bomb. Uh, no, I doubt no, it. See, he wouldn't go for an atomic bomb, ma'am. Uh, he's, no, he's talking but, about time travel. Now, what's so right. bad about that? Well, I it, just, I mean, do you think it's dangerous or what? No, well, um, I think it's I think it's just very dangerous as far as um, I'm sure some of the listeners that you that you have. Uh, okay, okay, you. maybe this will help. Maybe this will help, ma'am. Listen, everybody, do not try this oh, at oh, home. Yeah. Well, see, basically, you're going step by step by step. You That's know, right. Him. We absolutely are. That's right. Why are you doing that? Well, why do you think, well, are you worried that somebody's going to do this at home and fry themselves? Of course, of course. There's idiots out there in the world. Well, you know? yeah, but, but ma'am, there are people, uh, I could interview somebody who walked off a cliff. Uh -huh. Do you think that that would mean that my listeners would walk off a cliff? I really doubt you would have a guest on there who would try to walk off a cliff. I, I have always looked at you. But I, but what I'm saying is... The opinion of you has always been a person... I've, I really admire you, Art Bell. Now you're disappointed. And I enjoy your show, and you're a very intelligent human being. I am totally blown away that you would have somebody such as the guest you have on tonight. Why? And I'm sorry if I'm... Well, the question is why? Because of... The, All this... The, the subject that you are discussing... Um, you know, yes. basically there are adults out there in this world who have a childlike mind who will be um, ignorant enough to try this kind of thing at home. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, Michael? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hold you over a little bit. This is too much fun. Uh, now, um, tell him, Michael, say, don't try this at home. Don't try this at home. Thank you, Michael. Affectionately, we'll call him Madman Markham. And he's in Missouri. I think he's in Missouri. And, uh, Michael, uh, I read the story um, uh, last week, and I'm not going to go through it again, but it's entitled, Kansas City Man Tries to Build Time Machine on Porch. Now, uh, long story uh, short, he built a small... Uh, well, it wasn't supposed to be a time machine to begin with. It was just supposed to produce an arc and be cool. And uh, he, uh, his small model, uh, which he used a laser from a CD to cause the spark to begin to move up uh, Jacob's Ladder, it's what it's called, Jacob's Ladder, um, uh, when he got it all going, he noticed a very strange um, a sort of shimmery effect above the arc, and he threw a screw into it, common screw, and the screw disappeared. Well, now we're into something else. So... Um, our hero, Michael, uh, went over to the power company and appropriated, stole, uh, six power transformers, which he then hooked up to his line at home and made a giant model on his back porch using two gigantic poles uh, about four feet high. And uh, he got himself a big uh, Jacob's Ladder. He also uh, ruined a number of appliances, uh, browned out most of the town that he lives in, and uh, that, of course, is where the police entered the picture and appropriated uh, uh, Michael's Transformers. He lost his job. He went to jail. He's recently out. I somehow found him yesterday. We've been interviewing him for an hour, and um, we will continue to do so in a moment. Every line is jam-packed full, so a lot of people want to talk to Michael. Uh, a couple of faxes that have come in. Here's one. Art, all my life, I've been reading books and collections of unsolved mysteries and events. Several times I've come across a story about archaeologists discovering a perfectly machined, completely modern sheet metal screw. This screw was embedded in a piece of quartz that is at least 
10 million years old. This has always been a totally unexplainable, unsolved mystery until tonight. Dave in New Brownville, Texas. Then this, Great Joe Art, if time travel is possible, be aware the Earth, solar system, and universe are traveling thousands of miles per hour. If Michael Screws traveled through time, they'd be far from here in space. That's from uh, Albany, Oregon. And this, I'm going to fax a diagram to you, basically what your guest is talking about, except that it will not work with electrical energy. A massive power source such as your guest is speaking about, would create something that is more than anyone at this time would want to deal with. This system was being played with in Colorado without getting into names using low-frequency EMF. This. Hey, Art, I think the time machine idea is interesting, but did the bolt come back exactly the same? Was the bolt uh, analyzed to see if the material had changed at all. And on and on and on. I've got a whole pile of faxes here. Michael, did anybody analyze the bolt? Uh, uh, no. I was, uh, uh, just by, by looking at it, uh, uh, it weighed the same. It looked the same. It, it looks exactly the way it did before I threw it in. So the bolt literally disappeared from view. I mean, when you threw it in and it went into the field, Michael... It, uh, in other words, it disappeared. When it came back, was it still suspended in air, and then did it drop down, or what? Well, uh, like I said, this thing was like sitting on a table, right? Uh, normally, when you like like throw something, it'll like fall a para uh, parabola and land. That's right. Well, uh, I didn't see it like go through the air. It, I just saw it appear on the table. Wow. So, it, in other words, you threw it, and in midair, it literally disappeared. And when next you saw it, it was laying on the table. Yeah, and I did that three times because I figured, well, maybe I'd, like, miss, miss seeing it, like, go through the air. And the third time you did it, I take it that's when your laser blew up. Yeah. I was, I was like, going through that several times. I was, uh, I was like, going to, like, turn it off and borrow a camcorder and get it on tape. Oh, boy, I wish you'd done that. Yeah, but... Sure you do, too. Yeah. These are always things, though, that you think about later. Um, let's uh, keep perusing the phone lines here and see what people have to say about us. It's really interesting. Uh, east of the Rockies, uh, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Hi. Hi. This is Stanbury, Missouri. Are you... Arresting e officer. Oh, uh, you are the... Hi, uh, Tom Hampton. Hi, Mike. How you doing, boy? Hey, you still got my diary, don't you? You bet. Sit here on the desk. You are the arresting officer? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I'll be darned. Um, <laughs> wow. It's it's uh, great to meet you. I don't know if it's great for Michael. Uh, are you guys friends? Well, are we friends, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> well, listen, um, maybe, uh, officer, you can give us all of this from your perspective. What did you find when you arrived at Michael's house? Well, we uh, knocked on the door. There was eight of us in the, in the 13. Eight of you? Yes. Uh, there's one officer in Stanbury, and we had uh, county deputies in uh, Missouri Highway Patrol. To let, 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 let me back up a little, officer. Well, uh, you you got a search warrant, yes, sir. Obviously, because you you know you suspected something was going on. What was the basis of the warrant? What did you think was going on there? Uh, we had received information that uh, Michael had uh, these transformers in his residence, and that they were had been stolen. And after Checking with my local utility, which we have our own utility service here in Stanbury, uh, we found that they were from here. We checked the St. Light and Power out of King City, and uh, that's the man didn't know they were gone until we called him. And that's where we found out they were stolen, and we had, with the information we had, it gave us enough information to go ahead and get uh, a search warrant. So uh, you, you you got access to the resident with a warrant, and uh, look, what did you find? Well, we found Michael asleep. Where we had to wake him up, but uh, that we found the uh, transformer he'd made into a piggy bank uh, in the, uh, I guess you'd call it a dining room. Okay. On the back porch was the transformer that he'd used to make his Jacob's ladder. And then there were four more transformers in a uh, second uh, secondary bedroom. Uh huh. Um, and so then uh, off, off Michael went to uh, the pokey, I presume. Yes, uh, with the, as we call it, the Albany Hilton, in jail. <laughs> um, well, this is uh, quite an incredible story. 
Um, how did you feel that, I mean, did you think you were dealing with a madman or what? Uh, no, I had uh, met Mike, oh, I guess by the second day after he came back into the, or came into the state on another search warrant deal. I see. And uh, talked to him uh, just a little bit that day. He appeared to be an intelligent person, uh, what I considered above average intelligence on some things. And uh, then he was here in Stanbury. I had calls because people didn't know who he was, you know, a stranger from out of town. He, uh, he says he's not particularly welcome in that town now that a number of people feel as though their appliances may have gone belly up because of his experiments. Well, I haven't uh, personally had any, any uh, comments of that nature. I did hear your earlier part of your broadcast where he, he uh, browned out the majority of town, which was not right. It was just a small section, uh, approximately uh, two blocks, uh, where we had a little problem where the lights would flicker and brown out a little bit. <laughs> Uh, had this been occurring frequently? Uh, no, it uh, actually hadn't. It uh, happened a few times, and it, it quit happening. Happening without that from Mike that he uh, moved his experiment to later at night when people wouldn't notice it. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, wise decision. Uh, well, uh, this is um, uh, this is quite a story, uh, officer. I'm absolutely glad you called, Michael. Is there anything you'd like to ask him, or or the other way around? Uh, mm. Think about it, Mike. <laughs> are, are you suggesting that Michael should not proceed to try this again? Uh, I personally wouldn't, because of the, all the hazards involved. Uh, but electricity is a very dangerous uh, toy. Indeed. And uh, it's just one slip and uh, it's your last slip. I wouldn't do it. Well, I did like his electric cigarette lighter he had. You might have him explain that to you. His electrical cig cigarette lighter? Yes. All right. Officer. Oh, the one I made out of the microwave? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> um, officer, thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you calling the arresting officer in the case. Wow. Uh, all right, Michael, what about your cigarette light? What, what's this? Oh, uh, heck, I got it. I still got it now, but uh, uh, basically I turned my microwave. It's still a microwave, but I made a cigarette lighter out of it, too. Out of what? My microwave. Your, uh, micro your microwave oven? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's like a, a, tra there's a, a transformer in, inside that. And you, you like Transformers, don't you, Michael? Uh, yeah, it's kind of like, um, I guess you'd call it a hobby. <laughs> that's like, I've always been interested in those. That's like, uh, I've always been interested, heck, I've been interested in those things since I was like 12 or 13. So You know, uh, there were physicists in this article who commented that you were actually more or less on the right track. I mean, they, they sort of, even though they didn't think you should be doing it, they more or less endorsed the uh, the direction you were going in w with regard to time travel. Yeah. And so I, I'm kind of with you. I mean, I know the young lady and the officer are saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Yeah. But well, it's I, like they're, I, they're, they're afraid I'm going to like, uh, turn myself into fried bacon or something. Well, like of course, that. And, and you may. Yeah. You may. I mean, there is that risk, isn't there? Yeah, because with uh, high voltage, you don't have to touch it. You just get too close to it, and you're a goner. So. You get in the corona, and that's all she wrote. Yeah. And that's actually what you were talking about doing, ultimately, getting in, in that corona. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, east of the uh, Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Hello. Our Meister, Sky. Yes. In New Orleans. New Orleans, yes. Yes. Uh, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first off, I think I'd like to party with you, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 what I like, like about him, he's asking two of my favorite questions of all time. Uh, what if we try this, and also why not? Uh, it really, it really is true. And with the comment of the physicists here in the article, um, I mean, I, I really do understand his investigative, curious mind. I'm very much the same way. Right, because anything's possible unless it's already been proven physically not to be possible. But uh, uh, just a couple uh, comments and then one question. One, uh, I hope you take in and leaving very good note because you know you may send yourself into the wild blue yonder. 
Yeah. And someone can maybe uh, pick up where you left off, even though we would say we'd miss you. Yeah. And uh, uh, next thing is, uh, if you do see yourself making progress, I'm sure you'll be taking everything, you know, wisely and step by step. Do not let any kind of big company bureaucracy or anything uh, horn in or try and get in on a piece of the action because you know what that will end up being like, just like everything else. It will be t totally taken away from your control, and uh, you'll just be more or less cast to the wayside. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about right now. Cause, yeah. Uh, uh, I would just move carefully before you make any decision or any step because I've got, you know, some government experience. And uh, just, you know, just take a very careful step. Don't ever jump into anything. Yeah. And no. uh, my last question is, uh, next time you, uh, I guess, that vortex, uh, I guess for lack of better words, it doesn't sound like exactly what it was, but anyway. That's way to describe it. Yeah, because, well, anyway, you know what a vortex is. Uh, what about a digital stopwatch, you know, measuring into the hundredths of a second at least? You know, chunking that through. Uh, oh, uh, there's an interesting idea. He, uh, thank you, sir. He's saying throwing a stopwatch through. Now that is interesting, uh, Michael, because if the stopwatch made it out the other side, yeah, and, not, not, electri but not electronics getting destroyed. And there had been, uh, well, even if it's mechanical. Yeah. Of course, uh, then it would be a subject to a mechanical field, probably stop it cold. But if you could get one through, uh, it might provide you with an idea of whether it actually went through a time distortion. Yeah, like you said, like said to him, like uh, have keep one throw the other one in for the exact same time. That's good, Michael. Yeah. Very good. Uh, stay right where you are. We'll be right w back with you. Michael Markham, um, madman uh, uh, Michael Markham, uh, is my guest. We'll be right back. All right. Back to Michael Markham. Uh, Michael, were you surprised to hear from your arresting officer? <laughs> uh, yeah, very. <laughs> Me too. That was, that was like quite a coincidence. He's apparently uh, following your case, Michael. Does that make you nervous? In other words, uh, I would. Uh, he knows where you are now, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know if he does or not. I think he does. I know. Uh, I don't know if he knows the exact house I'm in, but I think he knows I'm in St. Joseph. So. St. Joseph, we'll see. So wouldn't surprise me, but that he or his friends might be cruising by your apartment looking for strange flashes in the yeah. night, that sort of thing. <sighs> All right, let's see what we've got out there. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Yeah, this is rep i got to get my radio art. All right, turn it off. Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. Just give me a chance. All right. I got it. It's gone. Good. Okay. Uh, Where are you I'm calling? The St. Joe Thursday. Where, where are you calling from? Sir? I'm calling from Leavenworth, Kansas. Leavenworth, all right. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to say that your guest, I think, is uh, just a little bit uh, nuts. Uh, he's probably as nutty as I am. <laughs> I would like to make a comment. Uh, as far as what he's doing, I think he's uh, he's on the right track, but uh, you being a ham radio operator, uh, that's what I am, uh, you have to understand that you also have to have a transmitter and a receiver. Uh, do you kind of get what I'm getting at now? Well, I guess uh, the Jacob's Ladder uh, may have been a crude transmitter and receiver in a sense. Uh, he well, was, in other words, he, have... wait a minute, sir. He was propagating uh, this voltage across those two rods, and uh, it may have been a kind of a blunderbuss way of going about it, but I can understand that he might achieve the effect he thinks he did. Well, uh, you had a, uh, a gentleman on one night that... Uh, 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 was explaining the uh, theories with Nikolai Tesla. Yes. Okay, and uh, I've studied Tesla in, in depth. I've uh, been studying Tesla for a good 25 years, and I'd like to ask your guest a question. Where did he come up with this uh, this idea that he would use high voltage? All right. Uh, it's a good question. Where did you? Um, the, well, the, you mean for the time machine deal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, like I said before, it, it didn't like I, went, I didn't set out to build the time machine. Uh, As is so many the, so many times the case with any discovery, you were simply trying to build a Jacob's ladder. Yeah, just like a, a something fancy to watch. I mean, uh, just to see the spark go up, sort of be yeah, some cool, something cool to do. I no, I look, I understand that perfectly. Believe me, I understand that. And uh, it uh, an unexpected effect occurred. These things happen. First time caller line, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Oh, hello, Art. Hello. This is Chuck in Redmond, Washington. Yes, Chuck. I just wanted to call, and I'm so glad I got through tonight, <clears throat> because uh, people like us that are messing around with this kind of thing, we got to kind of stick together. 
Oh, you're another one, are you? Well, a little bit. It's, I'm mostly my friends, that sort of thing. I, I got into about three years ago, started collecting information, and I've got a bulletin board, computer bulletin board service where I try to get all this stuff together and get people to talk about it. Because uh, I ran into a buddy who originally had taken, he was using a lot less voltage, but he was just using DC batteries, made a couple of coils, and uh, was using a police radio that he would key, well, excuse me, a ham radio, a handheld, and he would key it and then tweak through the frequencies, and I guess he hit the resonant frequency of the circuit. And cut a long story short, he ended up in the loony bin for a little while, and he's okay now, but I went down and snuck a tape recorder in to interview him, and I got it all on tape, about an hour's worth of conversation. And uh, he he told me, he was telling me all about his time travels and how he had gone through this portal and that portal and had to go through 12 worlds to get back, and quite frankly, I thought he'd lost it. And uh, I'm not even sure now, but um, that was kind of interesting. So I did more research, and then I, I pre presented this to another buddy of mine who fools around with electronics like I do, and I said, hey, what do you think of this? And at first he, well, at first he stopped, and then he looked at it and he goes, well, I can see how you get some kind of interesting effect out of that. And then about two weeks later, he kind of came up to me. Well, he came up to me, he was kind of pale in the face, and he said, uh, wow, one of the engineers upstairs at where I work, which is where they manufacture uh, medical equipment, mm -hmm. uh, said that he had taken two four-foot square capacitors out of an x-ray machine and hooked them up to a short length of 12-gauge uh, wire. You know, that's a very thick wire for somebody who wouldn't know. Laid it on the floor and threw a quarter in it, and he pushed the the uh, conductors together, or the electrodes together, until it got close enough to arc. I don't know, want to know how he did that. And apparently after the spark, it disintegrated the 12-gauge wire, and the quarter was reduced to the size of a dime but a quarter-inch thick and apparently still in good shape. Um, well, that's something, and uh, it's uh, another yet another effect. In the case of Michael's experiment, the screw disappeared and then reappeared. He's too young to call him Father Time, so we're calling him Madman Markham. <laughs> uh, here are a couple of faxes in on the subject. Art, no, I don't think you juice this one up. Well done, what a scoop. What tremendous bloodhound intuitive tenacity. You're one in a million, as is young Michael. I predict a great future for him if he doesn't blow himself up or get lynched first. I can just see the light pouring out from the cracks in the porch. Art, help him find a mentor quickly. And then, like he needs encouragement, get this. Art, we've done uh, what we estimated to be a 30-kilowatt version of what Michael did. However... We did not see the time travel application, but if he needs transformers, we've got them as leftovers from our electrical business. Free, if he wants, he provides shipping. I'm sure, like us, there are many people that have uh, more than uh, what he needs for experimenting. He's really talking small-scale power. 100 kilowatts is just medium power level. I cannot suggest within that it be done within the city limits, however. People are not very technically tolerant around here either. Randy, listening to Kogo in San Diego. So, uh, Michael, there you have it. It is a free offer of... Uh, of that which put you behind bars. Uh, th this guy's willing to give you Transformers. Cool, huh? Yeah, very. So, is that something you might go for? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I can put you two together. I've got Randy's number here in San Diego, and I'll give it to you privately uh, tomorrow. How's that? Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be arrested for being part of this. Um, but nevertheless, um, I, it's a good offer. How do you feel about the possibility... Michael, of somebody coming along and being your mentor even more than this, maybe contributing money to build a great big gigantic version. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be like a dream come true. So you'd, you'd go for it, huh? Oh, yeah. Set up a lab somewhere and go for the really big voltage and really big current and, uh, boy. All right, uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael. Hi. Hi. Um... I'm calling from Medford, Oregon. Medford, uh, K-O-P-E country. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, yeah. I was just wondering, what makes you think it's a time machine and not some sort of thing like Star Trek um, beaming from one point to another? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, what makes you think uh, you're on the track of time here, Michael? It disappeared. The question is where to go and for how long? Uh, well, uh, that's like, well, before my laser burn up, that's... Uh, Pretty much uh, 
this other side pack had to go by what I saw. So right now it could be, it's like a, it could be several things. Like it could have been like a, it could have went through time. It could have went through like a, something like the Philadelphia experiment and like a, made it invisible or something like that. I'm not like 100% certain what it is, but, uh. I'll, say, I'll say this much, Michael. Uh, all kidding aside, you know, I, I think that if I had done what you've done, and I, I'm kind of a person likely to do that, I disassembled all my mom's appliances when I was about eight or nine years old. Yeah. And uh, I'm a big experimenter, so if I'd noticed an effect like that, I'd be on it too, like glue, and I'd, I'd, I'd keep going. I mean, who cares what people say, right? Yeah. Is that your attitude? Yeah, pretty much. Everybody's got their opinion. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, and here's another one for you. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Hi. Hello, Art. This is Christoph from Kansas City. Yes, sir. Uh, right near where Michael's home. Yeah, very right near. Uh, my question would be, I, I would like to know if you guys would explore some of the more technical aspects, such as uh, which direction in time it might be going. Um, if, indeed, he did get to a point where he, can, he himself could step through it, how he would be sure that he could get back from which direction he went. That's an interesting question, um, although the screw came back, and he was going to try, I think you said, an orange next or something like that. Yeah. And see if it came back intact, and then maybe a kitty cat, and then maybe Michael. Would you? I, I'm curious, Michael, would you have stepped in yourself, or would you, if you got to that point, or would you have looked for a volunteer? <laughs> uh, well, if I looked for a volunteer and he didn't make it back, I'd, be, I'd make me guilty of murder. And, uh, I'm already... Got, I already I had like 60 days in jail, and that was a plan enough for me. So you you wouldn't want to be on trial like O.J.? No. Uh, of course, they wouldn't have a body. Yeah, that's true, but uh, heck, I don't know. So you would have you would have done it yourself then? Yeah. Uh, I I'd still felt, I'd, uh, if I wasn't like legally wanting to like then found guilty of like found guilty of anything, I still wouldn't want to want like anybody to do that. Okay. Uh, wild Card Line, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Hi. Hi there. Yeah, I've got a, about two or three questions for Michael. And, and very, very interesting uh, program. This is John from Reno. Yes, John. It's a great program. <laughs> Did uh, he have any uh, Tesla research information before he started this? Well, that's a good point. Have you have you looked into Tesla at all, Michael? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, science in general is like really, that's, I don't know, I guess you could call that my hobby. Uh um, uh, I read all, all sorts of books. Let's see, I've read Tesla. Uh, right now, I'm reading the. Uh, there's this book I forget who it's by, but it's like the string theory of the universe. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about the Philadelphia experiment? You, you check that one out too. Uh, it's like real hard to find information on that in libraries. So I'd like. Uh, uh, I've got like uh, this this past. Um, uh, conference I went to just a few days ago. Uh, found out like information on that, information on the Mont uh, the Montauk project, which is a spinoff of the Philadelphia experiment. Michael, right. uh, let me add something here. Uh, Michael, we did a program with one of the people involved in the Philadelphia experiment, and Michael he gave all the technical details of exactly how they did it in the program. Uh, was it uh, was that guy uh, Al Billick? Al Billick. Uh, I'm trying to get in touch with that guy. Um, I can get in touch with uh, Mr. Billick, and uh, what I'm telling you though is, we did a program with him in which he gave the exact technical details, the RF field and the electrical uh, field that they used, the intensities, the power, the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, you might want to get a copy of that program. It's the only. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you how to get that, all right? Or maybe I'll even have it sent to you. <laughs> on the East of the Rockies line, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Yeah, you got Ray from Fargo, Missouri. Hi, Ray. Yes, uh, my cousin just called me. He uh, called you from Leavenworth, Kansas. Oh, yes. Yes, he uh, didn't hear the answer to his question on the high voltage. And he was just wondering, uh, you know, he didn't hear the answer because he had to turn his radio off, and he called me and said he's only allowed one call a night. That's a true statement. So uh, uh, he'd <laughs> like to hear that. And uh, Well, all right, rephrase the question then for well, us. Well, he, he, uh, I'm not sure exactly what he asked. He just said that he asked a question about the high voltage, something about where did he get the information for that. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, I've been listening, and it's amazing about the uh, the way that works, you know, and I'd like to hear the answer, and uh, if you would give me a few seconds to go and shut my radio off. All right, well, I'm not exactly sure how to respond to it. Do you remember the original question, Michael? Uh, Something about the high voltage? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. We went through it, and uh, Michael explained how he built the first uh, transformer. Yeah. And then how he obtained the following transformers. And uh, so I'm not sure exactly what. Like, uh, like how, like, um, like how to, like, uh, uh, how can I say this? Uh, like how I knew, how to know, like how did I know how to make a Jacob side or something well, like that? Did you have an original design of some kind, Michael? Uh, for Jacob's ladder. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. The, the Jacob's ladder in and of itself, just to make a Jacob's ladder, is pretty simple. So you knew, you you just it was the scale of the thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Hi. Yes, this is Cliff from North Bend. Hi, Cliff. How are you doing, Art? Just fine. Hey, this gentleman, he's hey, he is really on the ball there. To me, isn't well, it? Well, see, he's either that or, according to a young lady who called, uh, he's like a terrorist, and uh, we're we're like helping him out, spreading the information. <laughs> <laughs> I admire him. Like I wrote the I'm about twice his up. age. I, I, I'm sorry, Michael. What did you say? It's like a, it's like a that one was like a as if I wrote the anarchist cookbook or something. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. The anarchist cookbook. Uh, any questions for him, sir? Yes, um, I would like to uh, exchange uh, some correspondence with him as I'm working with uh, Mark uh, on. Uh, I'm kind of trying to think of the last one. Hendershot, uh, free uh, power. And it's just a thought. It's crazy. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll... Twice this guy's age. Why couldn't we uh, make it self-powered? All right, uh, all right. Uh, on that note, um, listen, um, Michael, um, there are a number of people, a lot of them actually, I'm sure, who would like to contact you. Yeah. Um, is there a way they could do that? Now, you be careful because this is a big radio program, Michael. There's a lot of people out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to hear from anybody who would like to help you out or uh, oh, sure. correspond with you? Uh, how would they do that? Uh, well, let's you can see. either give out an address or a phone number. It's up to you. Well, hmm. I guess I don't. Let's see. Think about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't think they're all going to come at once and, like, Yes, the, 10,000 yeah. people come to my house at once. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, um, uh, I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a heck of a sight. Uh, maybe rather than giving out um, your address, Michael, you'd like to think about giving out your phone number or not. Is well, it's already published in the phone book, so might as well. All right. What is what is your phone number, Michael? It's 816-232-4019. Uh, yeah. right. All right. Let me give it again. 816-232-4019. All right, uh, we've got just a little more time here. So um, on the wild card line, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Hey there, Michael. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Yeah, this is Will in Spokane, the uh, original, uh, I think, uh, mad scientist when I was uh, probably about four years old. I incredible. Incredible uh, idea that you have. Um, what, what was your education? Uh, I was in a, about two years ago, I was, uh, well, actually it was from November 91, uh -huh. so about a year and a half later I was, like, major in electrical engineering. Oh, major, Jesus, you're only 21. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I, like, graduated when I was 17. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what would you recommend to Michael? Would you say keep going, uh, or stop now? I'd say, uh, get in touch with me. <laughs> That's what I'd say, and continue on. All right, well, you've got Michael's number. Actually, uh, I don't. All right, I'll give it to you now. You want it? Yeah, I do. Is there a code 816-232-4019? Uh, uh -huh. 4019. Okay, my name's Will, and maybe I'll give you a call, huh? Okay. All right, uh, there you have it. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Good morning. Hello. 
Well, good morning, Art. I think I'm going to go out and play the lotto now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I, I've really enjoyed this show. That that woman that called in, a couple of the people, a couple of the naysayers that have called up, I'm going to have to say they're all but persistent. This has got to be the funnest show you've ever done. Anywhere from getting this guy after I heard the story initially last night on your show and then this morning, and then the uh, police officer calling up, Art. This has got to be the greatest show uh, that I have heard in a long time. I want to know, though, is... Uh, Mike, are you going to be publishing? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Brian a book? Yeah. Yeah, uh, a book or you know some sort of uh, uh, just a technical manual or something like that. You know, or well, theory manual. All right, there you go. Uh, well, it's, uh, Hector's. Uh, if I, I mean, there's all sorts of books out there like on this subject. But, so I don't know. That's like remains to be seen. Maybe if you, uh, on a larger scale, get to try the experiment. Yeah, it's like a yeah. It's another thing too. If, if like if I get this thing in it, it uh, and uh, it actually like it actually works. Uh, heck, there's all, I mean, heck, I could write a book, do a movie, and do all kinds of stuff then. And hopefully tell us uh, whether it was a, a lone gunman or not. Yeah, that's <laughs> another thing I'd like to do too. Uh, is really. Uh, this may sound like a joke, but heck, I'd like to go back and see who really killed Nicole Nicole Simpson, but. That's another thing. Well, I guess that would be a laudable use of it, and uh, maybe yeah. maybe we could cut this whole damn trial thing short, uh, Michael. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, um, hold on just a moment. We'll be right back to you. Someone near Kansas City, my hometown, who is either truly on the cutting edge or merely yet another deranged madman. I frankly don't care if he is. It's just so nice to hear the tale of somebody's courage and following their intuition and going for their dream. Thank you, Waldo and Tehachapi. There you are. You're not a deranged madman, are you, Michael? No. Nah. No? Um, you would, how would you describe yourself? Uh, well, other than my strange experiments, uh, basically, just like anybody else. Well, I don't know, well, I don't know about it, just like anybody else. Well, right? that's the way I see myself, I mean. Uh, to you, you're normal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with uh, Michael Markham. Yeah, I was interested in uh, talking to Mike about possibly publishing, uh, as in one of your last callers said, publishing information. I am a computer junkie, basically. My uh -huh. name's David. I'm from Houston. So you'd like to interview him? Uh, well, what I'd like is, if he ever does go to the whole publishing stage, is to see if I could get him to send me the information on you know, what the outcome is, Maybe not exactly what he's doing, because, of course, he might want to keep that to himself, but or keep other people from trying it. But um, basically, get an overview of you know what type of information he's dealing with, what he's doing, what the outcome is, and possibly show it to the public to see if they like it at all. All right, and that winds into an earlier call. Thank you. Uh, we, we will give Michael's number one more time here. You're going to be on the phone a lot, Michael. Uh, Michael, are you take are you know the guy asked, are you taking notes? I mean, are there any notes so that if you stepped into the gap and turned into a French fry, that people could read and see where you went wrong, maybe? <laughs> uh, yeah, overall, uh, like like a general, uh, like write down every little thing, but I'm like keeping the general idea down. Okay. Um, oh, we've got so many calls. East of the Rockies, where are you calling from, please? In uh, Kansas City. Kansas City. Yes, Good morning. Sir. How are you? Fine. Mark, uh, just is north of me in uh, St. Joseph. I'm down here in Independence. That's right. And, uh, by the way, I have to echo the last caller. It's a refreshing difference from the stock market report. There you go. For which we have no control. Mark, I need to ask you something. It's Michael. Michael, rather. Michael? Yeah. When you uh, approach the day when you build the, quote-unquote, Ark of Triumph, <laughs> give me a call because I want to make sure I plug in my surge suppressor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love uh, you guys. All right, thank you. Uh, so he's he's worried about uh, the appliances there in Kansas City. Is there a way you can somehow protect the local area of the power grid that next time you do this, uh, Michael? Uh, well, um, I can like uh, uh, have the power company like put a bigger transformer on the pole. That way, I won't overload it. That's an idea. Yeah. From now on, I bet anybody in the Kansas City area, when they see their lights dim, they're going to wonder if you just jumped across. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Yes. I would like to know if your guest has uh, great knowledge of time travel. 
Great knowledge of time travel? Yes. Do you uh, have great knowledge of time travel, Michael? Uh, great knowledge of... Uh, uh, Some knowledge. Yeah, general idea, but like down to the nitty-gritty, and just like that's what I'm doing now. I mean, after all, nobody has real publishable knowledge of time travel. We're off into an area here that... Just isn't much known. Well, yeah, it's like right now, it's like treated as the same thing as UFOs and stuff like that. Sure, sure, absolutely. A wild card line, uh, real quickly, with Michael Markham. Hello. Hi, Mike uh, and Art. This is fantastic. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike, uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, do you have you ever listened to the Art Bell show before? Uh. Well, yep. okay. I just want to let you know that there's nothing but a bunch of wackos out here that listen to Art Bell all the time. And we really appreciate uh, a guy like you. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. Gee, do, do me some more favors, sir. <laughs> uh, let me say this. Uh, Mike, there was a, there's a guy who's a uh, cosmologist, uh, an astrophysicist. Uh, his name is Rick Thorne, and he's into what is called wormhole. Oh, uh, yeah, it's kind of like similar to a black hole. Exactly. Yeah. And what he likes to talk about, and this is also very fascinating, it uh, also has to do with time travel. Now, when you step in one end of the uh, the wormhole, and it has to do with the speed of light and then the space-time continuum. All right, we're about out of time here. Okay, well, he says, when you're coming back out the other way, you meet yourself. Now, I also wondered, if you threw the screw in, did you take a look at the screw and see if it was turned left or right-handed thread when you when you found it? Ooh. Interesting questions. Yeah. Keep it up, Mike. All right, Michael, uh, we're out of time. It has been a great pleasure. And, yes, we do uh, very unusual, kooky things on the show every now and then. But, Michael, on the serious side, I admire you uh, on a lot of levels. I really do. Not the stealing of the Transformers, but what you're doing and what you're trying to do. And I really appreciate your coming on the program. And we'll get your number out one more time. You're going to hear from a lot of people now, Michael. Okay? okay. You take care, my friend. Uh-huh. All right. Take care. Um, that's it.